In this video, we will be studying gene linkage, crossing over, and the gametic probabilities of three linked loci with two alleles on the non-existent sunlight flower. We will be observing three traits on the flower to see whether the following generation after a cross will demonstrate linked genes with recombination and mutant genes. The sunlight flower will either be recessive pink or dominant purple for color, short or long for stem length, and either have nectar present or be bare. So let's say we take a purebred recessive flower and breed it with a purebred dominant flower. We would expect all the offspring to be heterozygous in the F1 generation. Scientists will typically breed the F1 generation with a homozygous recessive organism to trace traits and observe inheritance patterns. But looking back at the P generation crossing, we can further examine in detail how crossing over affects the genome and phenotypes of the gametes. If the chromosomes crossed in between the P and L allele, this would result in a single crossover at position 1, abbreviated SCO1. Two of the original strands will include the parent, called the parent strands, and the other two chromosomes where crossing over did occur have the second two alleles switched. Likewise, if the strands crossed in between the L and N alleles, this would be a single crossover at position 2, where the final allele is one from the other chromosome. Finally, if the chromosomes overlapped in two places, this results in double crossing over, where the offspring will have one allele from the parent, one allele from the other chromosome, and the last allele from the parent, resulting in a zigzag pattern. Now, let's look at the genetic map of a heterozygous sunlight flower to observe how different uh, phenotypes are achieved by different patterns of crossing over or even no crossing over at all. We know that there are going to be eight different gamete types because two raised to the number of traits we are observing, three is eight. I have shown all the gamete types with their probabilities on the side, but let's talk about the calculations involved in the pink, long, bare, no nectar flower. If you follow the lime green line, you can see that we had a crossover at the first position, um, SCO1. Additionally, a purple, short, bare flower is the blue line demonstrating a double crossover. To calculate the double crossover, we would multiply the first recombination frequency percentage so 17 centimorgans to percent is 0.17 by the second recombination frequency percentage 0.08 and multiply that product by the coefficient of coincidence 0.75 to get the DCO probability. After you get that number, you need to multiply that by a half because there are two possible DCOs and we are only looking at one currently. To get the gamete probability for the pink long bare SCO1 flower, we take it out we take the recombination frequency percentage and subtract it from our DCO probability to get 0.1598. Multiply that by a half to get your gamete probability. And here are my resources. I hope that was helpful.